All right, as you can see, I modified task three. Task three now has two parts, uh, and we'll be taking care of both of those with a single access list. The first part is we're going to restrict VLAN 20 from accessing any resources on server one except for DNS. Uh, and then t uh, part B uh, is to allow VLAN 10 to have full access to the server. Uh, and then not written in there is we're going to block all the rest of the traffic uh, then going to uh, that server. Okay, So let's uh, do it with a named access list this time. So named access list is basically you can do it as a standard access list or as an extended access list. But instead of using numbers, now we can give it a name. So it, it'll make a little bit more sense. So we'll do config t. Uh, instead of doing access list, we're going to do an IP access list. And this is kind of what dif differentiates it. We're going to pick, I'm going to do an extended access list. And now I have the option of doing it with a word, okay, giving it a name. So this is going to be server. Uh, server one traffic okay now notice instead of listing everything out to the side now I can list them one by one here so I'm gonna do a remark this is for uh, the first thing we're gonna do is uh, allow uh, VLAN 20 DNS access okay so we're going to do a permit TCP. Uh, this is going to be source address. So 192.168.20.0.0.0. And I think VLAN 20. VLAN 20 is a slash 26, which should be a 192, which is a block size of 64. So I put it 63. I'm going to do. Uh, I don't have to put a destination in here, uh, but I'm going to restrict it to just the host. And we're going to put it to 192.168.40.2, which is the server 2. I'm going to do equals, and 53 is the DNS port number. Okay, so now I've permitted TCP, but DNS uses both TCP and UDP. So I just hit the up arrow, and I'm going to change this to UDP. So now we're going to both permit TCP and UDP on port 53. Okay. Now that allows them uh, access to DNS. Now we're going to we're going to allow VLAN 10 then access. So. Uh, in this case, we'll do a remark. Allow VLAN 10 full access. All right. So permit IP. This is going to be 192.168.10.0.0.0.0.127 because it's a slash 25. We'll do uh, host. 192.168.40.2 and hit enter. So all IP traffic from VLAN 10 can go to uh, the server. Okay, and then we're going to allow the explicit deny at the end to block all other traffic. So we only allowed DNS to go through, and then we allowed all of VLAN 10 to go through, and the explicit deny will make sure that no other traffic. Uh, from VLAN 20 or, or any of the other VLANs goes through. Do a end. If we do a show access list, we'll notice we have extended IP access list, server one traffic, a permit, a permit. Those are our two uh, ports or our two uh, DNSs permit IP then from uh, VLAN 10 and then the explicit deny at the end. So now we just have to apply it to a port. So in my case, since I'm filtering on traffic from 20, 
I'm filtering on traffic from 10 and basically all other traffic heading that way I'm gonna end up putting it as close to the destination as possible okay and so the closest place that I can put it then is the VLAN that services that server okay so I'll do interface interface VLAN 40 we'll do an IP access group uh, we call this server one uh, traffic and we'll filter it outbound okay so if everything worked from VLAN 10 I should be able to hit the web server 192.168.40.2 which I can I should be able to ping it which I can so we have multiple protocols working from VLAN 10 but if I bring up VLAN 20 and I try to go to its web address 192.168.40.2 doesn't go through and if I try to ping it oops I pinged the wrong address it's like why is that working it helps when you go to the go to a address that you're actually filtering on so pinging the address didn't work so web didn't work ICMP didn't work but let's see if DNS works. So if I do an IP config slash all, I'm using 40.2 as my DNS server. So if I do a ping router one, which is one of the DNS entries I've put in there, that works. So DNS works. So I can pull addresses from it, but I can't actually interact with it with any of my other protocols. So that's a named access list and that is task three complete so we covered standard access lists and that they only did source addresses we covered extended access lists that now I can do source destination protocol and port number and then we did named access lists where I can choose uh, for it to operate you know as a standard access list or an extended access list but it gives me the ability to name it which makes it a little bit more handy than just you know a bunch of numbers so I hope you learned something. Hope uh, hope uh, you know you have fun playing around with access lists. Uh, it's a real great tool for filtering your traffic through your router uh, and you know determining you know what kinds of traffic you actually want to pass through. So let me know what you think uh, and thanks for watching.